for the display and the analysis of your data, we're going to use PyMCA. PyMCA, it's a free software developed at the SRF, which that you can download um, on, on the web. So here, let's see. Ah. Download. Voilà. So <clears throat> here you have the main web page. Here you can download the, the last version of the software, both for PC and Mac. And uh, you have some tutorials, explanations as well. Okay, so we will start using PyMC. To open your data, you have either this one or this one. I prefer this one, it's more efficient. So then we need to find your data. Mm -hmm. So they are under data visitor and then the name of your experiment in your case es1001 so es okay id21 because that's the only beam line where you have beam time if you had if you would have had beam time at several beam lines you will see several folders what you see here is one folder per sample so all the names which have been given in the diagram interface, in the graphical user interface, if some data have been acquired co corresponding to this sample, then you see one folder. So now we are working on this sample, SS17FE. Uh, uh, so the data of interest are in this folder. So you could go in this subfolder, let's say, for, for, for this specific sample to open data from this sample. What you see is that you have one folder per point of interest or region of interest. So we could open one by one, but it would take edges. So instead of uh, opening each individual file, because this is where is the, the data is stored, we, we have like master files, which are just creating links to all the files which exist. These files, they are H5 files, and you have one at the level of the sample and one at the level of the experiment. So if I open this one, I will see all the acquisitions which have been done since this morning. If in three days you have too many data and it's long to reload uh, this master file, you can decide to go directly to the sample subfile if you want, mm. where you will have only data acquired on this specific sample. Okay, so we are interested now in Xen's data. So that's typically the way Xen's files or scans will appear in your H55. Uh, it starts with sequence of scan and it will have one scan per iteration. So here we did only one Xen's per point, but previously we did five iterations Per point, and so this is why here you have five lines for the same sequence of scan, and then we have something like forty scans <clears throat> with only one acquisition per point. What you see is that the, the name of the points are different because they, they correspond to each of the points which have been defined in the graphical interface, and they are unique. These points of interest, yeah, that we can see here, but they are not sorted following the, the number there they are sorted following the sorry not this one the order the chronological order where they were acquired and when you selected a queue with many many points they were not acquired one after the other so that's not critical because what is important for you to know is what is the the point number and then we you can check if it was acquired in a, in a glass or in a sulfate concentrated region Okay, so <clears throat> to see a scan, you have to click on the uh, scan itself, not sequence of scan, but the scan. And you have two options. Either you will use the auto panel where you have all the possible counters. So in our case, the X axis, the energy axis is named a negot. That's the, the counter from the, the monochromator, which is defining the energy. And in your case, the Y axis, of interest is the signal from sulfur, which is named sulfur, K alpha, corrected by the, no, the, the dead time and normalized. So if I do that, now you see a spectrum acquired on this particular point. 
which the display you can change with this symbol. So either only lines, lines and dots, or only dots in principle. Um, okay, so the auto will give you all the information, but it may not be super convenient because basically among uh, 60 counters, you are interested in two or three maximum. So if you are going to spend time using PyMCA, my advice would, would be to define for yourself user counters. So to do that, you have to open, let's say the scan options here, with clicking here, and then measurements. And then you double click on those that you want to, to populate, let's say to, to add in your user list. So we want sulfur and we want any good. And we can add, because it can be useful to check it, the fractional dead time. It's a way to be sure that we were in the good dead time conditions when, when we run the, the Xane's acquisition. So now that I have these three counters, I can close this or reduce it. And then any good sulfur. And then replace. Okay. Um, with this, I can easily superimpose the 45 zanes, replace. So under options, you have this panel, show high legends. And with this, you have the possibility to see the color corresponding to the name. And you have the possibility to display or not some specific uh, spectra. For example, if I want to remove this one, I click on this one to see the, the number. So it's 2,120. Although it's, I see this one. So if I remove it, check. Now I will, I will have the display the same for this one, maybe. So if I want to see only the, let's say, low concentration mm -hmm. sulfur, I can just dis deselect or remove. So if you want to see only one or few of them, if I click here and I say replace. Oh. Ah, so it should be only one. Voila, here you have only one. So you can really decide which spectra or spectrum you look at. Um, what else? You can also, you have the possibility to have the left axis and the right axis. For example, here, you see that I have a family of low intensity exams and one which is very intense. So if I click, right click on the uh, right mouse, I can say map to right. And then I have the left axis for, for these ones and the right axis for the black mm -hmm. one. Another way to do that is to somehow normalize. Uh, so I should add very concentrated ones, normalize the, uh, the spectra. So keep in mind that if you have deselected them, this is recorded. So if you want to see them again, you have to reselect them from here. So the Xen spectra, they can be normalized such that it is easier to compare them independently of the sulfur concentration. You have two options for that. You have, uh, I would say, a high quality dedicated Xen normalization option in which you are going to configure uh, basically three aspects. If you want the edge position to be automatically or mathematically determined, or if this is something you fix manually, mm -hmm. and then the pre-edge uh, polynomial function and the post edge polynomial function. So, for example, we could try with linear and linear, mm -hmm. and then I can adjust. So here, the the pre edge will be calculated in this region, and the post edge in well, we can we can do something like this in this region. Okay, and once the configuration is defined, you can launch it, and it will be applied to all the spectra. Okay. This is only for display, nothing has been said. But if you would like to save this, you have here an option. Here you would save in the, uh, independently each spectrum. So, but in this precise case, you may be interested in this multi-scan uh, saving where you have all the scans which are displayed, uh, which are saved in a, in a unique file. Alternatively to this, let's say high quality uh, Xenes normalization, you have low quality, uh, normalization tools, which have the advantage that they work in a robust way. While sometimes with the normalization, if the edge position is not well defined or if the min and max ranges are not well defined, you, you may have some surprises. So under this normalization, you have a couple of sub options. Mm -hmm. So here you will remove the minimum in Y and divide by the difference max and min. The second one is similar, but you divide by the sum of the max 
minus mean, and in the last one, subtract offset and normalize to integrated area. And also you have two more options here as well. So usually this work, this one works well. And this way you can also have an idea of the designs after low quality, let's say, uh, normalization. So it can be a good way to, for example, uh, look for differences between uh, one, one point and another, one spectrum and another. For example, here it seems that there is a shift for the mm -hmm. position of the yeah. white line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's have a look at the different options which are offered in this uh, scale bar. Uh, this one, so if you want to zoom, you can zoom directly. And if you want to come back to the main field of view, you click on the lens like this. Here you could switch to log scale, that's in Y or in X. Here you can add a grid. Here, this is to show points. This one is if you are interested in, in uh, somehow getting an idea of the cumulated intensity over a region of interest. Not so useful for the xanes, but it can be useful for X-ray fluorescence spectra. Basically, the, you will have a new panel if you click on this symbol. And here you can add region of interest. Mm -hmm. You, you define the range of your region of interest. You can give it a name. And here you can read the row counts and the net counts. The net counts will be the intensity above the line going from this point here to this point there. Uh, so well, in, this, in this precise case, it's not interesting, but when we are dealing with maps, this is a, a tool that we are going to use. Um, here you have some options for fitting, simple fitting or customized fitting. This tool is for averaging all the plots which are shown, like, and then you can save the results of the average again. I would recommend to use a dot dot uh, format rather than MC. Dot dot is like ASCII, two columns, very simple. Here you have the possibility to calculate the derivative. It can be useful, I mean, sometimes for Zanes, people are relying on the maximum of the derivative to see some tiny shifts of uh, edges and so on. Here you can smooth if necessarily. Here you can uh, invert or multiply the active curve by minus one. Here you force the Y value to zero. Uh, here you have some, uh, you can subtract. Yeah, if you would have two uh, curves, and one that you consider as somehow representing the background, you could subtract this one to the other ones. This is to copy paste, and then you can uh, put the figure in the notebook. This is the saving options. What is important is that, and maybe I should spend a few seconds on this one. Okay, so if I go here, you will find here options for graphics formats. And so if you want to export high quality graphics of Xens from BiMCA, you can go there. So maybe I can do, okay. Okay, so you have the possibility to change the name of the scans. So by default, it's A, B, C, D, E. So I guess it's Ah, Alors là, that's because you, the name of your scans is very long. So it could, we could say, I don't know, sample A, reference. Spectrum like five, B. five selected. Uh, deep, so. Class, whatever. And then um, this will be updated uh, as soon as you click on one of these refresh options. So now you see that I have the names of these scans. Uh, you can change the color yourself. You can change the style of the line one by one, let's say. The line symbol as well. And that's it. So, and this way you have somehow something that you can put in a report a minimum then you click on accept if you are happy with the results 